Imagine going outside. It is hard to imagine these days, but imagine that. And seeing organisms that sort of look like humans, but not quite humans. They look more like humans than, let's say, chimpanzees, our most closely related species. But they are definitely not humans. It is weird, isn't it? Because right now, we are the only species that belong to our lineage, hominins. But for many years, in our 5 million years history, that was not the case. There were other hominins, there were many hominins, different hominin lineages occupying the same space and same time. There was a big news story recently because of a new discovery in South Africa in a site called Drimalin. Today's video is about that discovery. This tiny skull cap is rocking what we know about an ancient human species was the title that was given to this big news story. It was about DNH-134 or Drimalin-134, the Homo erectus individual. It's a skull cap. Notice that this is looking sideways. This is the eyebrows or brow ridges, and this is the back of the head. How did this tiny skull cap rock what we know about an ancient human species. So first I have to explain what it is that we know about the ancient human species. Let me bring you back to a very brief summary of our history. Five million years ago, our lineage starts, Ardipithecus ramidus, Australopithecus anamensis, and Australopithecus afarensis, we will learn about in a couple of weeks. And around 2 million years ago, a new genus appears in the landscape. It is Homo genus. We belong to that genus as well. Our species name is Homo sapiens. This Homo erectus, Homo habilis, are discovered in East Africa alongside Boisei and Ethiopicus, but alongside Boisei. Now, this Boisei is called Australopithecus or Paranthropus Boisei. Compared to the East African story, where there is the Paranthropus and Homo, in South Africa, we have Australopithecus robustus, or also known as Paranthropus robustus, and Australopithecus sediba. In other words, there is no Homo until later. So the presumption was that the East African Homo expanded into South Africa as well as to the rest of the world. To recap, in South Africa, around 2 million years ago, there were two lineages, Paranthropus robustus and Australopithecus sediba. Both of them are Australopithecine species. In Paranthropus robustus, notice this structure right here, which is a broken off of a structure called sagittal crest. Sagittal crest is where the big chewing muscles attach. And so if you have a high sagittal crest, we don't have a sagittal crest, but if you have a high sagittal crest, that means that you have a big chewing muscle. Paranthropus robustus also have big teeth, big molars. So big molars, big chewing muscles, and big chewing muscles attached to a sagittal crest is a set of traits reflecting the powerful chewing adaptation of Paranthropus robustus. Such is not the case for Australopithecus steba here. But then, in the journal Science, April 3rd, 2020 issue had this great article writ written by a bunch of scholars from many, many countries. The title tells the point of this article. 
saying contemporaneity, meaning same time, existence of Australopithecus, Paranthropus, and early Homo erectus in South Africa. So remember, until now, we thought that around that time, two million years ago, Australopithecus and Paranthropus were the only two lineages represented in South Africa. And now there is a new discovery of early Homo erectus in South Africa too. This is the cranium. Remember, sideways looking, this is the forward and this is the back of the head. There should, this should be where the ear is and this is where probably eye is right here. This South African site of Drimelin being 2.04 to 1.95 million years ago is arguably earlier than any other Homo erectus sites of the world, such as the, those in China, Indonesia, Kenya, um, and Georgia. This belongs to a child about two to three years old and very similar to the other child Homo erectus from Mojokerto in Indonesia. Notice the pink one is the Drimulin 134, the discovery of today, compared to the gray part is the Mojokerto. Notice how very similar both of them are and therefore they are both Homo erectus. In the same site, there is Paranthropus robustus, DNH 152. How do we know that they are a different lineage? They basically look very similar to the DNH 134 we just looked at, but check this out. It has a sagittal crest. Here is, you're looking at the cranium from behind. So this is the back of the skull, and here's the sagittal crest where the chewing muscle will go attached. That's a very distinct difference between Paranthropus and Homo. They were basically side by side. This length is four meters, which is about 14 feet. 134 is here and 152 is here. They were maintaining social distancing but very close. Of course, they were not there at the same time. There's about tens of thousands of years difference between those two species. But it is amazing that they are this close. So 134, the Homo erectus, coming out of 2.04 million years ago strata, compared to the DNH 152, which is the robustus, right around 1.9 million years ago, strata. So there it is. New discovery of Homo erectus in South Africa. But this is just the beginning. More research to come. The takeaway from today is this. Human evolution did not happen stepwise manner. Where you have the Australopithecus, Africanus, then Homo habilis, then Homo erectus, then Neanderthals, then Homo sapiens. As if one dynasty comes and then goes and another dynasty comes in and goes and yet another dynasty comes in and goes. It is not a transition. It is not a replacement of a previous lineage by another lineage. Rather, there are several lineages that are evolving next to each other, adapting, using, employing different adaptation, different adaptive strategies to survive in new environments. I can't wait to talk more about these lineages in the coming weeks. Thank you for watching this video. Please like, don't forget to subscribe and set an alarm for my channel, Human Evolution. And also, don't forget to take vitamin C for your immune system. Until next time, stay well and stay healthy.